So from tutoring and talking to students last year, many of them have requested a video on BC chemistry and how I approached this challenging subject. So here it is. This video is going to cover my entire approach for the subject from the very first class to the final exam. So the way that I'm going to structure this is I'm going to have some key questions that you can see here and I'm going to outline some of my habits and tips and hopefully they can guide you in forming your own approach. Now, when you're learning the new content, pre-learning is a very helpful tool. Now, I might have mentioned this in a previous video, but basically what I do before each class is I try to review the content beforehand. So that might be looking at a textbook or going online and finding a quick YouTube video, or you can just look at your class notes beforehand. And the main reason for this is that research has shown that pre-learning allows you to build deeper connections and therefore understanding because you've already been exposed to the content and now you're just reinforcing what you've learned. And the analogy that I just thought of was it's kind of like getting a flu vaccination because vaccines essentially expose you to some form of the virus so that if you do get the actual infection, your body will be better equipped to combat that. So it's kind of like how pre-learning better equips you for learning the content in class. And yes, I guess that could mean that learning the content beforehand is like getting vaccinated for the chemistry virus. And just to clarify, this doesn't have to be long. My personal preference was just to watch a short five to 10 minute YouTube video. And I found that this better um, helps me visually understand some of the concepts as opposed to just reading a textbook. And speaking of textbooks, here is how I used mine. First, in terms of going through the content, if I'm struggling with a particular area, I find that looking at the textbook gives a good alternative perspective. Um, but for the most part, I use the textbook for the review questions, which you can just find at the end of each topic. And even though these aren't like the best design questions in the world, they do help solidify some concepts. So this is helpful when you're initially learning something and you just wanna check your understanding by doing some simple textbook questions. And of course, you don't have to do all the questions, I just pick and choose until I'm fairly confident with whatever I'm learning. And to make the most out of the textbook questions, I recommend paying close attention to the wording of the answers. So the answers at the very back. Now, this is important because this can give you a clue on how assessors um, are looking for marks. And this is one of the things that many people, including myself, uh, struggle with. Because sometimes you can understand a concept, but you might not be able to put that into uh, the words that the assessors are looking for on the final exam. So by looking at the answers um, after you've done the questions and then seeing if there's any differences and comparing, uh, this allows you to be better prepared for the exam styled questions. And this was actually something that I included in my notes, uh, but more on that in a second. Next is note taking. And I know a lot of people debate over typed versus handwritten notes. And for me, I used a combination of the two. So initially I did my notes on my laptop because it was fast, convenient, and I could quickly note down anything the teacher was saying in class. And that way I didn't miss out on important points that were being emphasized. And another advantage is that you can modify your notes. And this is important because you might find that when you watch a video, read a textbook and listen to your teacher, they all talk about a topic from slightly different perspectives. Now you don't wanna have every single perspective uh, in your notes but instead you wanna combine and integrate them into one explanation that makes sense to you. And so from this, you can see that I highly recommend that you look at two sources before doing your notes. So after my type notes, feel free to just leave it there. Um, but my personal preference was to practice recalling by handwriting these notes again in a separate notebook and then filling in any gaps if uh, there are any. Now look, I'm not an arts person, but I did find it helpful to capitalize certain words and add some color here and there because I found this visually easier to read and it also made me want to look at my notes more. So this was my hybrid approach to note taking, which allowed me to exploit the advantages of both techniques. And you might be asking, doesn't this take a lot of time? And um, the short answer is definitely yes. But I found that the more time I spent on making high quality notes, so I'm talking about the quality of the content, not the color or um, the design. The more time I spent doing that, the less time I spent revising because I understood uh, the content well from this double layered uh, note taking approach. So there's always a trade off between how much effort you put into your notes in the present versus how much you need to revise in the future. 
So we've probably all heard that understanding is always better than memorizing. And it's definitely the case here. And apart from watching videos or other sources, which can help you understand a topic from different angles, another way that can help your understanding is to make your notes more visual. And what I mean by this isn't necessarily adding more color, but rather turning words into um, diagrams or tables or mind map. So for example, tables was something that I use the most when you're comparing two or more things like uh, types of fuels, differences between galvanic and electrolytic cells, or all the organic cam functional groups. By laying out these concepts in a visual way, when it's usually quite scattered in a textbook, it makes it much easier to see the links between different topics and therefore aid in your understanding. So after learning a new piece of content, between that and the exam, my process was just doing practice questions and adding anything I found helpful into my notes. So here's what I mean. So your notes are not static. I would always go back and add additional details as I did more practice questions and exams. So you can see here in the small black writing, these are all the additional notes that I added after doing more questions. And these basically contained the ways that assessors worded particular concepts. And this is because one of the most important tips is knowing how the assessors are wording the answers. Because the wording in textbook answers or examiner reports contain particular phrases that maximize your chance of getting the correct mark. And apart from this, another thing that I added were questions that I either found hard or got wrong. And you can also see that I came up with a set of work solutions for each of these questions. And for me, this was the most important part of my notes because the final exam is essentially just a bunch of questions. Yep, I know, big surprise. But the idea here is that by framing your notes in the form of questions, this allows you to first get used to the difficult questions you might see or got wrong. But second, it also gives you a structure for answering these questions. So how often did I revise or review over my notes? And to answer this, First, I'm going to introduce something called spaced repetition, and you might have heard this before. And this basically means reviewing a concept over increasingly longer time intervals. So for example, you might review topic one after one week, and then look at it again after two weeks, and then again maybe after five weeks. And research has shown that this boosts long-term retention. But I'm not going to lie, I wasn't disciplined enough to review my notes like every week or every two weeks. So here's what I did instead. So hopefully first you have a set of detailed notes containing content, questions, and also answers. And what I would do was I would just review my notes one to two weeks before a small test or quiz and a bit longer if it was a sack. And this acts like a quick refresher. And yes, I know this is a bit of a passive process just looking over your notes, but this is why I follow this up by doing more questions and more practice sacks and then adding anything new from those uh, practice questions back into my notes. So I'm continually building this resource. And then two to three months before the final exam, I would begin reviewing my notes more regularly. So in a more spaced repetition kind of way. And uh, that was just because the exam is obviously uh, much bigger and there's much more to remember in that case. So I'm not saying that this technique is going to work for everyone, but it was practical for me. And that's why I used it. Also, I wanted to shed light on what exactly I did to get a raw 46 in camp, but feel free to make any adjustments from this. Um, as much as I hate sig figs, uh, yeah, you gotta know them. And just as a bit of a bonus tip, whenever you're doing notes or questions or practice exams, start using dot points and shorthand because both of these will save you a lot of time writing. For example, when you're doing some short answer questions, you might like to use dot points because you can save words and you can list out your ideas very clearly. Uh, but the other thing is shorthand, and I do recommend using these. So rather than saying increase or decrease, you can just write an arrow. And also you can use some acronyms to save time. For example, the acronym FAME, so fatty acid methyl ester. So you can write that, and that's a thing in the biodiesel equation. And also other things like LCP, so Le Chatelier's principle, and there's some more as well. Just look at the examiner's report and usually they contain the acronyms they can use. All right, so that is it for this video. Hope you found that helpful. And if you want to support me, a somewhat small YouTuber, then make sure to send this video to a friend who's also doing VC chemistry. And I'll see you next time.